Hey, wonderful person. We're back here again talking about the narcissist again. This one's going to blow your mind because it's going to take you, it's going to be a blast from the past. Okay, before we get into it, if you like these kind of videos, you like this channel, you, you like what's going on here, press the like button, subscribe. It helps the channel out. I'm very grateful if you can help the channel out. We got a, a, a little community growing here, and we're trying to get the word of narcissism out to the world. What the blueprint of it is to help everybody that comes across these these types of people because it's all trickery. It's uh, it's like a magician's act. And just so you know, in the background, I got a thunderstorm going. So ooh, let me unplug the computer right there, the laptop right. Okay, now we're safe. Let's get into it. All right, so uh, this one is about how the narcissist will screw your mind up royally. This is the most screwy, I'm not trying try to, not to use curses here, the most screwy mind F ever the narcissist uses. And this is really, especially when you're a kid. Um, yeah, so... You know the narcissist when you're growing up with a kid, or you're in a relationship with the narcissist, and you know what they're like. They're abusive, they're difficult to get along with, to say the least. They're dismissive. They, they're cruel. They are, um, and I can go on and on, right? Okay, they're not pleasant at all to be around. You can walk on eggshells around them, and it's not even going to help. Now, we go out into public with the narcissist. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it's showtime! <laughs> right? And they're like, hey, everybody, I'm the nicest person in the world. You love me, don't you? You love me. And they do. People soak it up, left and right. And then you're sitting there like, I don't believe what I'm seeing. Or you've seen this before. Normally, you've seen this before, uh, especially if you grew up with them. You've seen how they go from cruel and dismissive and abusive to being the life of the party. Pleasant, friendly, even to you, some degree. Not as nice as to everybody else. The narcissist is way, way, way nicer to strangers than to their loved ones. To strangers, way nicer to strangers than their own children. I had a narcissistic mother and I asked, I told her point blank, you're way nicer to strangers than you are to me. You're, you're more abusive to me than I would be to a dog, to an animal. I wouldn't even treat a, a rat like you treat me, right? I had nothing to say for that. Narcissists never do. They know it's true. They're always trying to gaslight themselves out of this shameful, despicable thing that they've become because of being messed up as a child. Now, my mom was a narcissist, but her father was also a narcissist. So she would complain about the things he did. And she would, one of the things she would complain about, so this is a narcissist's view of another narcissist. She, would, she hated the fact and that he would go into public and he would be so nice and so loved by everybody else. But she said, but I'll quote her, but behind closed doors, he was an effing bastard. The narcissist pinned it. And then she would do the same thing. <laughs> when you're messed up like this, it's just what you do. It's... It's like you have to go through a lot of therapy to get unbroken from being a narcissist. It just it is. Hey, when you hang around a narcissist for a while, you become broken too, and that's not even nearly as deep as broken as they are. So you need a lot of work and a lot of healing. But imagine how much they would have to do. It almost never works. That's why I tell people, do not try and help the narcissist. Do not try and convince the narcissist. Don't try and heal them <laughs> or fix them. They're not broken as far as they're concerned. Matter of fact, they're better than perfect. 
you're broken, and the world is broken as far as they're concerned. Now, going back to the narcissist, and they're the life of the party. And I've seen some narcissists out where they make this transition, this night and day transition between being an effing bastard behind closed doors and then being the nicest, sweetest, most angelic person that I've ever seen. It was an act worthy of 10 Oscars. I mean, it was a dance of pleasure to watch this narcissist being so nice. It was like, I didn't know people could be that nice. Now, that should have been a red flag right there. Like, what is this? Why is this person doing this? There's nobody that nice, right? <laughs> now, this has a lot of effects. You would think, oh, well, at least they have. The normal person, if they heard that and they believed it, would say, oh, well, that's not so bad. Behind closed doors, they're, they're terrible, but at least in public, they're normal. They're not normal at any, <laughs> on any occasion, right? That is Narcissist 101 being nice, trying to look like, that. that's what they call the mask out in public because they know the public wouldn't accept what they really are if they really saw it. They only feel secure enough to show what they really are in a secure area, the secure surroundings. And if that's the car or the or at home, that's the only place they'll let it hang. Now sometimes some narcissists do let it let it go in public, but that's after copious amounts of alcohol, right? Uh, and then they're terribly ashamed at what happened. Uh, there's a lot of shame behind the narcissist believe, believe it or not. There is a conscious behind all that mess. And that's part of the gaslighting. They're gaslighting themselves. When they gaslight you, they gaslight themselves too, right? Calling you a liar, calling you overly sensitive, calling you names and putting you down, that helps them feel like they're not wrong, you're wrong. Now, when you, are, you see the narcissist and they're out in the public and they're the life of the party, and you know it's all a scam, and you hate the fact that people are just gobbling it up left and right. Like they can't get enough of it. Oh, this is the nicest person. Oh, your mother is the nicest person ever. She's a saint. And you're like, oh, God, if you could have seen her a half hour ago where she was really a bitch and has been like that ever since I knew her. <laughs> and now she's, you know, the nicest person ever you'd know you were being scammed. And so you're sitting there like this, right? You're, you're angry because you get treated like dirt and everybody else gets treated like royalty, the strangers. You are angry because it's all a scam and, and you're also angry because everybody's eating it up six ways from Sunday. And you're also angry because they're telling you that this essentially evil person is the nice person, the nicest person, not even just nice, like they are the nicest person, a saint, and you know it's, it's anything but that. It is the opposite of that. You are angry about all these things, so you're sitting there, you're sullen, you're, you're, you know, you're not looking happy, you're kind of angry about the whole situation, and people don't know about narcissism. That's why we put these videos out. Well, that's why I put these videos out. <laughs> to educate everybody. People do not understand narcissism. And they don't understand the duality. When they see your narcissistic mom out in public, they think she's like that all over the place. They think like she's like that at home. She's Mrs. Beaver or something. Some, you know, magical woman who... <laughs> or husband, or whatever the narcissist is in your life, in your experience. But you know otherwise. And so they see this terribly nice person, and you're angry sourpuss. And you're telling, you're, you're saying mean things about this nice person. Well, obviously, this looks like you're the problem. This is a nice person. And also, when you complain about somebody like that, they will say, the normal people in society will say, well, uh, she's always been nice to me. 
He's always been nice to me. He's always done nice things for me. I can't say anything bad about that. And it gets, and so now, right? <laughs> it's like other people are gaslighting you because the narcissist gaslit them. They believe in it. They won't see the other side, but they believe in it. They believe the show, right? The narcissist is like a magician and he comes on, you're like a magician, comes on stage, you're all dressed to the nines and, you know, a top hat. Who wears a top hat and a cape and a, and they have a cane and, a, you know, it's all a show and there's smoke and there's fireworks. Same thing for the narcissist because they got tricks. They got tricks up their sleeve. They're going to, yeah, there's a reason why the narcissist does this on people, but we don't even have to go there because this isn't about other people. This is about how it screws your mind up because especially when you're a kid, you ask yourself, is this something I did to make my parent nice in public, but then when I get home, I must have done something else to make my parents angry at me. Is there something that I did to make them angelic in public? What did I do? You know, because kids are always insular. What did I do to make this happen? What did, what did I do to make my parent angry? What did I do to make them nice, to treat me nice? And honestly, when they're a narcissist, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. Even if the narcissist was married to a, a therapist, it would, there was nothing that the, the therapist could do because the narcissist has to want, right? Has to want to get better, has to want to grow. And if they don't, most of the times they don't because they think they're the smartest, bestest thing in the world. And they also see the world as a hostile place. So if, the, if you are trying to um, help them, you must be trying to hurt them. Uh, so they're not going to want therapy. Uh, and my old saying is that the people who want therapy the most need it the least, and the people who need it the most want it the least, or something like that, right? <laughs> but it's true. The people who need therapy the most want it the least. And they, they definitely need therapy, and they definitely don't like it. All right, so let's get back to the point here. <laughs> um... So you know the narcissist's reality and you try and tell people and they're not having it. You're like the person at the beginning of the alien movie that's trying to tell everybody that there's aliens coming and you're running through the street. You're trying to tell everybody, warn humanity before catastrophe happens and everybody's blaming you for the problem. Everybody's looking down at you because they see this wonderful person, right? apparently a wonderful person, and then you're all angry and casting dispersions on this charming, wonderful person in public. And they, you know, they, people don't know about narcissism and they just automatically blame you and they say, well, maybe you're the problem. And then the narcissist comes over, you know, and, and says, you are the problem. So you'll start doubting. This is a big gaslight mind F, right? Uh, situation, you could really doubt your perception. You have everybody saying that you're the problem when you're the victim. And this has an issue of isolating you from everybody else. Everybody who could be helping you and supporting you and getting on your side and pulling you out of the narcissist web of lies and deceits and confusion and anger are not going to do that now. Because they're, they've been gaslit by the narcissist. Now they're actually against you. And it, uh, actually if the narcissist gets hears that you've been saying bad things about them, they'll just say bad things about you. Even worse. The narcissist knows how to do it better. They know the battlefield better. They know uh, the ammunition better. They know their victims better than you do. Because they're well practiced at it. They've been doing it years, if not decades. And in fact, the narcissist usually runs a narrative like this against the intimate people they have in their lives because the intimate people they have in their lives know the, the truth about it all and can unravel the narcissist's story. The narcissist usually knows 
that that is a possibility and runs a counter narrative, a counter propaganda campaign against the truth that could come out. So they basically they're saying you're the problem with their life, with anything. And it's just BS sometimes. They just make stuff up. It doesn't really matter. But what matters is that you're the problem and the narcissist isn't the problem. So that when something really happens, they already got a victim. They already got a suspect. And it's you. You're the problem. Always with the narcissist, right? This is why a lot of uh, children of narcissists one being the truth teller, because the narcissist definitely isn't going to do it. And the child is always like, but that didn't actually happen. But that's a lie. But you're lying about that. No, this didn't really happen. Right? And a, a very big need for justice. So, of course, here they are being the life of the party, uh, being the most charming person since time began, and everybody's complimenting them, and they're laughing and carrying on and complimenting people in the best and most beautiful ways. And everybody's like, oh, this is so, your, your mother is such a saint. Your, your husband is so wonderful. I wish I had a husband like him. <laughs> and you're thinking, so do I, right? Um, yeah, but then the party's over. And yeah, Dr. Heckle, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, is that how it goes? Yeah, that's it, right? And now where does the narcissist feel safe? Because that safe space is where they're going to let it rip. Because all that anxiety has been building up in them while they're being Mr. or Mrs. Nice Guy. It's still there. And... It's just a matter of where they feel safe enough to let it rip, to explode. And you know, if you've lived with a narcissist for any amount of time, that getting behind closed doors is one of the most dangerous places to be. Because they're going to let it rip when they feel secure enough. In the car, a terrible rides home, right? Terrible abuse and cruelty happens in the car ride home from one of these wonderful events where the narcissist was being a saint. Or a lot of narcissists will wait till they get behind closed doors in the house. The, the house is their kingdom. They feel like they can do anything there. They can carry on tortures and executions there if they want to. And if they want to execute your soul, they will go right ahead and do that. And after a party, it's a pretty good time to do that. And they will usually let it rip, especially if they've been triggered in some way by you or uh, anybody else, honestly. It just builds up in them. And when they get home, it all busts loose. They explode onto you. They vomit all their hate and anger towards you. And, it's, and some of it hasn't even happened. Like some of the arguments they come up with and some of the things that they're arguing about or complaining about didn't even really happen but it's what they feel and it's part of the gaslighting process right when they're putting you down it's part of the gaslighting process they're trying to keep you down to keep that superiority supply if you're up here because you're feeling good because of the party and they look like Mr. Nice Guy. They want to make sure you know <laughs> that's not how it is because niceness is a weakness in the narcissist world. So you need to be put in place. And that happens where they feel safe enough. That car ride home or definitely in the house. That's part of what it is. And the horror stories that come out after these terrible, these, these wonderful events where they're the most charming person in the world. That's so what is happening with the narcissist? Why do they do this? Uh, there's a lot of reasons, right? Right. <laughs> but why do they do it to you and just to their loved ones and just in the safe space? Because narcissists don't feel safe in the world. They this is a battlefield for them. And they're on the battlefield and everybody's out to get them. You especially, right? And weakness are the things that we, as humans, have. 
It's called niceness. It's called love. It's called intimacy. They see that as weakness. And they're revolted by it because they don't want to slip into that trap. They don't want to become weak like you, right? And they think you're weak because you're with a narcissist. They know what they're like. Why are you there? They know that they abuse you, <laughs> right? And you still love them? Well, that disgusts them. That revolts them. They never want to be you. They never want to do that. They never want to be that vulnerable and that pathetic. That's how they're seeing it. Now, I'm thinking of this because my mom was a narcissist, but was also raised by a narcissist, right? So, they dislike narcissists intensely. Yeah, they dislike, but they don't... It's, <laughs> it's complicated. Everything with a narcissist is complicated. Everything with a narcissist is black and white, push and pull, love and hate, give and take. Everything with a narcissist is like that. Even with the narcissist relationships with their parents, their parents, and their siblings, even if they are narcissists in their family, it doesn't matter. It's all complicated. You can't just... And then to tell the regular public that this is how it is, you know, we need these videos, dude. We need these videos out in public to um, educate the world on this. Because this is, this is in a form of insanity that wrecks lives, devastates lives. And it devastates more than it should because the narcissists go from relationship to relationship because they burn through relationships because people say, the hell with this, kick them out of their life. They go on to the next unsuspecting victim and they start the cycle all over again. More so than regular relationships go on and on and on. Because, right, we're trying to find the one, the, the, the one that we're going to be with for the rest of our lives. Narcissist isn't really looking for that. They're looking for their narcissistic supply. And if that's not A, then it's B. And if it's not B, it's C. And they go through jobs and all kinds of romantic relationships and friendships and relationships with um, other people and other things even and just burn them left and right because they they have a disorder <laughs> and it's not nice. It's terrible. And the longer you stay and the more intimate you are with the narcissist, the more damaging it is to your psyche. The, yeah, we won't even get into that. That's a whole nother, the damage that they cause, the actual damage that they cause. When you go to a therapist, they'll know how damaged you are. They'll know that you're damaged in certain ways when you say you've been with a narcissist. So this is a definite case of abuse. It's emotional abuse. It's verbal abuse, psychological abuse, sometimes physical abuse. And who are you going to tell that's going to believe? Everybody in the community has probably seen your narcissist being the nicest thing under the sun. And everybody's going to say, who? That person? That's, but they're so nice. right? And they're trying to justify the story between you painting them as a monster and the nicest person they ever saw. Now, law enforcement usually has education around this, right? When they pull somebody over or when they come to a house and the narcissist is, they put the mask on, hey officer, how you doing? Right, <laughs> they're the nicest person ever. The narcissist, uh, the uh, police officers usually have been trained to, to look at the narcissist, the, the person that's being nice, and the other person. If the other person's angry and sullen and not so nice, that doesn't mean what it looks like necessarily. They're trained like that. Unfortunately, the court system, not so much. And when you get into a court, the narcissist puts on the mask and he's nice. 
And he's, I don't know what she's talking about, Your Honor. Uh, you can ask the whole community. I'm the nicest person here. Everybody thinks I'm fantastic. I don't know why she's calling me a monster. Now, he didn't actually say he's nice, but everybody else thinks so. And that's true. So the gaslighting just never ends. But in reality, <laughs> he is a monster. And you know it. And, every, and sometimes a large portion of the family knows it. I've known two families kind of intimately, you know, my family. And I had a friend who he had a narcissistic grandmother who pulled the puppet strings on about five or six people simultaneously. It was, a, it was, a, it was something to behold. But, and she was a narcissist too. So I've seen these two fan, these dynamics in um, two different families and actually three different families when I consider my um, grandfather on my mother's side was also a narcissist. And he, yeah, and she complained about him bitterly. But, you know, when I started to realize that she was no better than he was, she she was complaining about the things that he was, <laughs> she was complaining, the narcissist complained about the same things. And he would complain about her too. The same things that he was. They don't like themselves. And this is where they have this shame on the inside. If When you peel away all the layers, there's nothing but shame on the inside. So if they can't gaslight you, say you're a gray rock all the time, it's going to bother the hell out of them because then they are left with themselves. Part of the, the, the arguing with you is to gaslight themselves into thinking you really are the problem. That they don't need to do anything with them. They don't need to do any work on themselves. It's all your fault because it came out of their mouth. It sounded kind of good. I'm going to go with that. They gaslight themselves through you. They wreck your lives and they feel good about it. But also, they have a certain disgust for their loved ones because why would anyone love a narcissist like them? Somebody so shameful and so despicable and so cruel. Why would anybody love that? And a helpful way to think of this, if you're expressing it to someone else, it's like a magician. It's a lot like a magician. Like, like I said, the magician comes to the show and he's all dressed up and he's got a top hat and a cape and a, and a wand and there's fireworks going off and smoke and got a monocle, you know, all kinds of... That's it. That's part of the show. And the narcissist does the same thing for pretty much the same reasons. To elevate themselves in prestige to you in the audience that they have. If you, if you, you know, think of an, a, a, a magician that would just come on stage in the regular street clothes and a t-shirt, not so impressive to start out with. So any tricks they did, you'd probably be like, eh, you have to kind of elevate yourself. You know, here we, here we are with the narcissist trying to elevate themselves right, in superiority. And then they start off with this big show. And it's all smoke and mirrors, as we know. And then... You know, you know, if you spend any time with the narcissist, that it's all smoke and mirrors. And there's also something about information. When information first gets into us, that's most likely what we believe. So like politicians and I, I remember something from Julius Caesar. It was so important to get information back to be first with the narrative that Julius Caesar had special in envoys that would take his version of events on the fastest horses back to the Senate in Rome to tell them what really happened in order for that first story to stick. Then anybody else who had any other versions, it was almost automatically thrown out because if we almost automatically just take for granted that the first story we hear is the true one. And so when your narcissist comes out and they're like, oh, I'm the best, most charming person ever in public. And then you say something contrary to that. They already have all the information they feel they need. They've already seen perfection and it's your narcissist, right? And your story gets lost. And you may even, I used to have dreams that I was 
screaming as loud as I could, but no sound would come out. That's the sound of trying to tell people what's really going on with the narcissist behind the scenes. You can scream as loud as you want. It's not going to make any difference. The narcissist doesn't care. They like that stuff. The other people in the world, they don't believe you. So it might be difficult for people to get their story out to the public and get the help that they need. And the narcissist isn't going to be helping it either. The narcissist is going to tell a therapist that you're the problem. And some therapists believe it because they're new. <laughs> they haven't been around the block and they can be hoodwinked. And honestly, the therapist, the, the narcissist may have a higher IQ than the, than the therapist and be able to twist them around and twist stories all around and be very good at what they do. And um, the narcissist will tell you, I don't have any problems with people. I don't have any problems with anybody else in the world. Just you. You're the problem. Right? And we being normal people have to, tr our brains have to take that piece of knowledge and examine it. Maybe I am the problem, right? Maybe. But narcissists never do that. If they get a piece of knowledge like that, they just kick it away and gaslight the hell out of it. And I learned that's what I had to do too when I was caring for my elderly narcissistic mom. And she would say that I was the problem. I would just be like, no, I'm not the problem automatically because I know it came out of a narcissist's mouth. That's, uh, that's what I had to do <laughs> to get by mentally, psychologically. And I still had a lot of psychological damage and mental damage work I had to do and probably still do that I don't even know about. And this, these videos are helping me. This is therapy here for me and probably for you too, because you probably have gone through the mill on these beasts that have beat you up, chewed you up and spit you out. And you're just looking for a little something to say that you're not crazy. And I'm telling you, you're not crazy. You're not crazy. You never were. You were the sane one. So, I want to reach the average person that might be watching this. It is difficult. I'm talking to the average person that hasn't had time with a narcissist. It is absolutely incredible how quickly they change and how deeply they change. It isn't like this gradual thing and something pisses them off and then they start complaining. As soon as that car door closes, a lot of them go off. As soon as they hear, boom, they're safe enough to tear people and be abusive into people. And you'll read it down in the comments. Come on, people. If you have experience, and you do, <laughs> put it down in the comments so people can see this is real. It's night and day. It's like flicking a switch people. It really is. It really, really is. And as soon as they hear that car door close, they can just snap. And they go, and sometimes they rehearse stuff before they get in the car because they know they're going to be in the car and this is going to be the safe zone and they can just be as cruel as they want to be. And they're ready for the first salvo, what they're going to say, what they're going to lace into. And and the uh, the your soft points, what they're gonna, what names they're gonna call you, basically, to get you going on this uh, ride of abuse that they're going to uh, dance with you on. So that's why we need to make videos like this. That's why we need to spread videos like this. I made I'm making these videos in Creative Commons license. The reason being is that. I want people to be able to slice this up however they want to and disseminate it throughout the world. We have to shout this from the rooftops that narcissists are like this, that these people actually exist and this is how they actually behave. And even though it might be incredible or seemingly impossible to the average person, this actually exists. This actually happens exactly like this. Even worse, I can't use words to compare uh, how real this is and how devastating this is to people 
these aren't just average people that are yelling at them. These are their, their intimate partners. People that you, they, the normal person has opened their heart to this narcissist who is just shredding it and devouring it and laughing all the way. It's enormously devastating to the person on so many levels, even while they're not really even realizing. All they know that, that they're having a lot of arguments and they're trying to get through. Um, but they're really being devastated. They're being shrunk down. They're being compressed and they're being devalued and their confidence is probably being eaten away. Maybe even uh, now everybody's gaslit and they're being gaslit. Now they don't even, they're not even really sure what's, what's up, what's down anymore. And this has a lot of ramifications in their life, monetary ramifications, because they, they don't really know if what they feel is real. They're dissociated from their feelings because the narcissist has played with those feelings so many times that this, the victim of the narcissist really don't, isn't really in touch with their feelings like a normal person is because it's just messed up. So uh, we're here making these videos and, and telling the world that this is a real thing and this is really how it is. So put your comments down below. I try and keep it light. I try and keep it so that um, everybody wants to hear this and passes the message on. So like subscribe, pass the message on, let other people see this video. Hey, if you're in a situation that's like this and you can't or you don't want to explain it to them uh, because, you know, the normal person doesn't really believe that this is actually a thing and it definitely is a thing as you well know if you've been through it, show them this video, okay? And if you're in a situation, a terrible situation, a crisis situation, I'm putting down in the comments crisis numbers for, I think, three countries, America, Germany, and Great Britain. Uh, those are the three countries that usually watch YouTube videos, my YouTube videos at least. Um, yeah, so that you can get in touch with people that can help you through those crises and it doesn't have to be a situation where it's so dire, it's life and death. You know, if you just feel that you're trapped and you don't have anybody else to talk to, you might want to call one of these numbers and then that can help. And read through them to see if you are, if any of these will help you. Because some of them might help you. And then you can get the help you need. And let me tell you from a person who has suffered through narcissistic abuse, the smallest things can help drastically. Big, huge things can help. And you probably need, honestly, you probably need help more than you think. So seek it out. It's, it's okay. It's okay. You were abused. This, you were abused. Your head was messed with. Your perceptions were messed with. Your feelings were messed with. Your nervous system was messed with. And all this stuff needs to be recalibrated so that you can be a normal functioning person and join the rest of the people that are not perfect, not billionaires, but still enjoying their life and getting on with it. So I hope this helps and pass it on, pass it forward. Let's get on with what we can, what, what amazingness we can get out of our life. Let's do that.